Right, currently in the C43 AMG. If you didn't see the video that I've done on this car, you can go and check that out in the little tab up there. Um, do you know, every time I drive this car, I can't help but think how much potential this car's got. Like it's freely a V6 twin turbo engine. This could be amazing um, as full drive. But anyway, the reason why you're here is uh, because I've just had uh, a BMW E92 M3 come in, a V8, naturally aspirated engine, serious car. Um, I don't know if I've had one on my channel before, but I've sort of bought and sold loads of them over the years. Um, haven't had one in stock for a while, and I'm quite excited about driving it. So I'm just dropping the Merc off to RRT in Luton, because in the in that video that I've done on this, you, I mentioned that the wheel was buckled. Um, so I'm gonna get the wheel sorted on this, and then head over to the car buying shop, and pick up the M3, all right? So, I'll see you in a bit. Right, before we get on with this video, I just got to remind you that my competition went live for my Golf R. This is my 560 bhp meth injected Golf R that I bought off of Arthur a few months ago. Um, it is now back in the competition on my website, planetofdreams.co.uk. It's £25 an entry, and if you buy five or more, you're going to get in for 20 quid each. Now, ultimately, one ticket will win this car, and it will be the best 25 quid someone spends. So, if you haven't got involved, or somehow you didn't know about it, Head over to my website, planetofdreams.co.uk, answer the skill-based question, and if you get that question right, it's quite a difficult one, uh, go and check it out, find out what it is. Um, <laughs> if you get that question right, you'll be entered in for a chance to win the car, and it'll be the tw best It'll be the best £25 that someone spends, all right? And as soon as it sells out, I'll do the draw. Let's get on with the video. All right, this is it, we are here. Leon's, head Leon's come over in the... Uh, RS6, that's just over there. Look how cool that car looks. Uh, to pick me up, um, as ever, there is no parking here because they're so busy. Uh, let's quickly drop this off and then we'll go get the M3, all right? Camera bag, I need that. Look that up, look. Y Turbo 4 mate. Right, throw that in there. Let's go get the M3. There it is. Window goes down. Oh, it does need a bloody good clean, don't get me wrong, but listen to the cold start on this. <laughs> uh, battery's dead. Oh, wait, hold on. It's saying they're not completely keyless, are they? It's got to go in there, isn't it? That's it. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. What's going on here then? Open it up. See them two screws? Yeah. Put your fingers on it like that. Yeah. Then put your key in. Really? Put your key in. You have to do it all at the same time, yeah? Alright, so that goes like that. Mm. <laughs> fingers on there. No way, that is. Electricity through your body. Yeah, <laughs> felt that. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? All right. So I pretty much just told the whole world how um, to start this car yeah that's, that's like a security thing that's it's a secret um obviously to prevent people from stealing it and now everyone that's just seen that knows that if they want to steal this m3 they don't know how to do it now so let's uh, pull it out and try and get some cinematics film but it is now raining which is a bit annoying um so they're going to be very brief all right so it's cut into cinematic scene of m3 <laughs> Yeah, I make decisions to glow. Ridiculous flow, potential to glow. You know, I, I just do that. Consolidate my readers, line it up, put them together. Anyone that ever let me down, forget them forever. My memory's bad. Remember me, though? My memory's gone. My memory, it limits me home. No tree huggers, cause all the lumber's gone. Niggas knocking on wood. Pass through the hood when it's good and they chopping up wood. But yeah, that weather's not good, is it? Kind of calm down a little bit now. Not ideal when um, you've got a rear-wheel drive car with 400 brake. Um, this, oh yeah, I've got to do this stuff over here. The keyless thing's a bit annoying because that actually looks like a keyless key, doesn't it? And you know we're all used to kind of used to using keyless keys. 
Put your fingers on there. Start the engine and a big V8 fires up under the bonnet. So this is actually a stock car. There's no tuning done to this car. Um, one second. Massively multitasking. Massively in a rush. back end so let's quickly uh, there's so much to be said about an M3 isn't there? M3 is like the notorious um, it's the ultimate really, I say is it the ultimate it's the one that everyone sort of goes to a bit like the Golf R of the Volkswagen world is that a fair point? it's probably not a fair point is it? M3 is the one though isn't it? but uh, this one's obviously the E9X version I think the, the coupe's an E92 is that right? Um, they do a coupe a saloon and a convertible and funny enough I've been looking at these lately I look at them often because I really like the look of the saloon ones back in the day when these came out I wasn't a fan of the saloon ones but for some strange reason I feel massively drawn to the saloon ones at the minute so yeah I've been checking them out they've held their money really well um, but they're at a time in their lives now uh, where they're probably at the bottom of their bottom of the market as in they're not probably not going to depreciate any further than they are at the minute and you'll probably find if you look online that for the price that you can buy a reasonable E46 M3 like the previous generation you can actually buy an E90 M3 so they um, yeah they, they 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 offer a lot for the money you can buy them for so they start at about I would say about twelve thousand uh, pounds this particular car has done 41,000 miles that is exceptional mileage for the year of the car it's a 57 plate so it's 12 years old at the minute uh, so yeah serious mileage I've actually been trying to buy this car for years uh, it came from a slizzer and he just had it parked up and he's like oh I'll sell it one day I'll have to dig the paperwork out and it's just been going on and on in fact I'm gonna go get petrol first it's been going on for ages so yeah eventually bought it and um, like I said, we've had lots of them in and out over the years and uh, mainly been manuals, ironically, because they introduced the, the dual clutch transmission, the GCT gearbox when they brought out the this era of M3. And um, I don't know, maybe people were skeptical of them because the SMG in the previous version, let's face it, it weren't that great, was it? Uh, so yeah, a lot of them now, a lot of these seem to be manuals and it's quite nice, I say it all the time, it's nice to get into a manual car. Uh, just nice to have a little bit of proper analog fun, isn't it? So I think what I'll do is, um, I, know, I generally, you know, I, I, in videos, I mess around a little bit. So I need to get petrol. It's all very unplanned. I've got 17 miles in the tank. I've got to drive to work, Binker in Bletchley. Got to get fuel first. So let me get some fuel and we'll get back out on the road, all right? Breaking up seams, till in my brim With a limp like a pimp, though I'm shaped like a wimp They put no fear in him, it's just me and the end of my timeline Flow like a fine wine, smelling like fine pine Yeah, is this the end or just the beginning? Am I losing the winner? Is this the reality picture on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, Instagram, let's get that uploaded Show the world I'm spending more money on fuel All these big cars, they just, yeah <whistles> Done So Continue on. I suppose, yeah, the big question really is, is an E92 M3 better than an E46 M3? Because that's like, you know, the E46 M3 was an absolute icon, a legend of a car, wasn't it? That is probably one of my, it's up there with my favourite cars of all time. I love E46 M3s, um, the straight six, naturally aspirated engine, they, they made that raspy sound through the exhaust. Um, 343 bhp they were a great car they looked amazing there was nothing really that existed that looked like one of them and even now if you look at the e46 m3 they just look so bloody good and when they brought out the this era of m3 it's like hold on this is going to be better and it's going to be an improved version it's going to be amazing and they obviously mentioned it's going to be a V8 and they, they, they brought this car out with a V8 M3. This is massive, like wow, it's actually, it's, it's a, it's, it's, this is a huge improvement. They put two more cylinders under the bonnet, which was odd for a BMW because 3 Series BMs never had V8 engines. It was really crazy that they put a V8, but I think the reason they put a V8 engine in under the bonnet of this car is because Audi announced that they were putting a V8 in the Audi RS4. So, um, you know, BMW and Audi being competitive German brands, 
I suppose uh, BMW had to change the game plan and stick a V8 in their M3. So they did, and it was seemingly a massive success. But me as a petrol head, uh, which car do I prefer? Was I more excited about the E90 M3 than I was, I keep saying E90, E92, whatever it bloody is, the E9X era of BMWs? Was I more excited about this car when it came out than I was the E46 M3? And the answer to that question is no. And nothing, this is no disrespect to the car at all because these cars are amazing. You drive down the road now, you look at the mirrors, the, the car itself is a huge improvement. Like, let's talk about the mirrors there, wouldn't I? Let's talk about the overall improvements. You get in this car, it has got a V8 engine under the bonnet. The big bonnet bulge, the E46 did also have a big bonnet bulge on the bonnet. Um, there's a lot of character here. Again, talking about the mirrors, they just look so good. The interior is a huge improvement. It's so much more modern in here than it was in the E46 M3. So yes, it's undoubtedly a better car than the E46 M3. It just feels like, uh, maybe it's just where I'm at in myself in life, you know, when an E46 M3 was the car, I was probably the right age to look up to that car. Whereas when these come about, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But. They are a better car, they offer more, they've got more power. This is 420 bhp, which is about 80 horsepower more than an E46 M3. This is also rear-wheel drive, which is, um, you know, it's a typical BMW trait, front engine, rear-wheel drive, and it sounds amazing. This is a stock car. It's, um, even you give it, listen to that. Throttle response is on point. It's got, back ends of, Ivy. All the power's right up top. <laughs> the manual gearbox, don't matter what BMW you get in, the, the, the manual gearbox feels pretty much the same in every single one. Uh, they're good gearboxes, they don't, uh, they seem to manage power really well, they don't, I can't say that I've ever put a clutch in a, in a BMW of any kind, like a, a manual one. So clutches and gearbox are seemingly quite strong on them. It is an improvement. It's a better car than an E46 M3. Just like I say, for me, the E46 M3 was just like the legendary, legendary icon BMW M3. And that's just my summary. But let's talk about the, continue to talk about the pros of this M3. So, bigger engine, more power, looks amazing. Um, when you get in here, you've got the, uh, you can adjust all of the, there you go, you've got the M button on the steering wheel, which you can press that, and you can adjust that on the US iDrive system here. iDrive, again, was a massive, massive uplift on the interior because the previous generation M3 had, um, you know, like the typical orange lights dash. It had that sat-nav system, which was really poor. Um, that's my phone, I'll ignore that. Let's get out of this junction as well. Who's ringing me? I get out, I can't see, nothing. Let's go, let's go. See, you gotta be careful. Uh, yeah, back end's really lively on it, but it is a damn day. I don't think we'll be doing draggy time today because it ain't even, it's, it's pointless. But yeah, the, uh, the old E46 M3 interior was a bit, it was a nice place to be, don't get me wrong, but um, there was a lot of improvements that were needed and, and in this car they've definitely done it. So, throttle response is on point. Both cars, if you drove an E46 M3 today and jumped out of that and drove it, drove this, ironically they do drive very similar. This does feel like it's got a real strong pull high up in the rev range. Um, I suppose it would, it's got a huge V8 under the bonnet. But, <coughs> oh, excuse me. little touch of the accelerator pedal seats. It is a limited slip diff, and I think, this is the thing with this car, right? Um, it offers so much, and I always, always talk about value for money, and my M135i is worth the same money as this car, so this is probably worth about 15,000 uh, pounds because of the mileage, and my M135i is worth similar amount of money, okay? And um, a good E46 M3, is worth that type of money. Now the downfall of my M135i currently is it, it doesn't have a limited slip diff. And if you really want an LSD, 
uh, you've kind of just got to have one and I, I, I'm in that position I want I want an LSD this car has an LSD the E46 M3 has an LSD now I, I often think well why do I want an M135i over these two cars if they're an M3 they're a better car good point I just really wanted an M135i I just like the idea of that small hatch sort of uh, that squat body uh, but this is a really good car for the money now if you're in the market to buy an M3 you're probably going to be looking again at an E90 M3 or an E46 uh, M3 and what one do you go for if you buy an E46 M3 right now uh, and you keep it for a long period of time assuming you bought one of them today and, and kept it for five years and bought one of these today and kept it for five years you would definitely make more money on your E46 because they're at a perfect time in life where they are definitely beginning to creep up. I almost bought an M3 CS recently, about six months ago, and it was as simple as I was too busy at the time, I didn't get a chance to go and pick it up, and I didn't buy it, and as a result of that, I lost out on it and someone else bought it. But right now, the CS's, I thought six months ago they were too cheap, you could buy one for about 12 grand, and now they're sort of 15 grand upwards, so, that's a good thing to buy if you if you want to put your money into the right thing. The thing that I find interesting with this car is because I've obviously got the M135i and it it's not an M car. Let's fact I know it's got the M in front of the 135i, but it ain't an M car. It doesn't have wide arches. It doesn't. Like, it's a great car. I love it. You know. You know how much I love that car. But it's um it lacks that side of character I suppose so and for the same price you can go out and buy either an E46 M3 or an E92 M3 and I, I have looked in depth at both cars thinking should I have bought like before I bought my M135 should I have bought one of these over one of them and I think it really is down to personal preference which one of the three you prefer I don't think an M135i is a comparable car I think if you want an M3 you've got to have an M3 you don't want a bloody M135i it's less of a car in a lot of ways but for me it is exactly what I want now comparing the E92 M3 to an E46 for me personally again I would much rather have an E46 because they're just the way they look the way they I don't know this drives better, it offers more, the interior is better, everything about this car is better than an E46 M3, everything's been improved, it's just for me, if I could have an E46 M3 and it, I've got so much connection with them cars, I've had so many of them, I love E46 M3s, but not to say at all that this ain't a good car, because it's bloody brilliant, and I think, like I said, <coughs> I've got <coughs> really sore throat today, sorry about that, um, the thing that, the only thing that lets these cars down, these and E46s, is, is the fact that you're really restricted with tuning. The F80 M3s, you've got loads of tuning potential there, loads you can do, just a simple remap gets you a lot more power out of them, uh, but with these there's not really loads you can do. Something else is a massive improvement on these cars is you've got the M button on the steering wheel, you put that, turn that on and You've got more throttle response, you can adjust the steering, you can manually adjust how you want your car to be set up on the screen there, which for the time this car came out was really, really a modern thing and a, a, over the E46 M3, it was a massive improvement. But, I've got to be so careful with the accelerator pedal, but I think what I'm going to do is, it was just a simple journey to work, I was dropping the C43 off this morning, a uh, little bit of a vlog. The summary of this car is, if you're in a position to buy, because I'm at work now, by the way, if you're in a position to buy a car like this, yeah, they are, in my opinion, at, they might depreciate a tiny bit more, but I think right now is a very, very good time to buy one. The manual gearbox is a brilliant, it's a safe bet buying a manual gearbox, and um, yeah, they're just a great car. Good time to buy one, you ain't gonna lose no money on it, and you will have a hell of a lot of fun in it. So, I think that's kind of my summary of this car. If you feel like you like an E46 M3 better, I don't, it's just an opinion, it's each to their own. I know a lot of people will disagree with me and say, Calvin, do you know what? An E92 M3 is so much better than an E46 M3, which I agree with you, but for my own personal preference, I love E46 M3s, and I'm definitely gonna get one in my life. 
very, very soon, all right? So I'm gonna park up and I'm gonna end it here. It was a bit of a nonsense video. I did bang on a little bit. I'm good at that. Um, and I think you'll agree with me in the comments below, but yeah. I'm at work now. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on E92 M3s in the comments below. If you did like this video, hit like. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video, all right? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader, we're gonna find out which car is quicker out of my 700 BHP Audi RS6 and my 560 BHP meth-injected Golf R.